and welcome to today's little workshop. Today I'm going to be talking you through the differences between washers and filters when you're working with your scale models. So there seems to be a fair bit of confusion out there about what's a wash, what's a filter, what do you use it for, what's a pin wash, what's a dot filter. So I'll talk you through the four techniques today and um, hopefully you'll see what you'd use them for and what the differences are. I've got here my trusty test bed tank. So this is a Tamiya King Tiger that I made 25 years ago, I think, and it's my beaten up test bed for all kinds of ridiculous things that I try that, you know, I would never use on a model that I've actually put time and effort into. So this will be our test subject today. So let's start off with our first one, a wash. So a wash is an overall painting of a thinnish colour. Um, generally it's about sort of one part colour to ten parts thinner and basically it's a big overall splush that you'd use to make something fairly dirty overall. My preferred paint is Van Dyke Brown oil paints and I just thin them with plain old thinners. Uh, nothing special, nothing exotic. The, the way you would use a wash is for large areas that you want to get really grubby. So for example these tracks at the front here. You'd put an overall wash on those. It's a big area, you splurge it on, you know, it's nothing too precise, and it gives you just grime on an overall area. Well, that's just a big chunk of oil paint there. Yeah, it gives you grime on an overall area, so it's, it's not precise, it's big, it's messy, it's something like that. When that dries, if you have a look at the difference between the two, fairly clean, fairly splooshed up and messy, and it's good for just, you know, messy overall in a big chunk of area. An overall wash is also quite good for things like wheels, where you just want to... That's a bit too thick. You just want to enhance detail overall, so there's no particular details you're trying to enhance. You just want the whole thing to get a bit of a sort of shadow effect, or a bit of a grime effect, or a bit of an oil effect. So yeah, you can already see the difference there. Just thin that a little bit more. So it's picking up shadows, it looks a bit oily, looks a bit dirty. That's the effect that you want with a wash. So the second technique is a pin wash. So again, it's a roughly sort of 1 to 10 ratio you're after. Um, but this is applied with a much finer paintbrush and it's much more detailed work. So this is to enhance detail and generally, typically what you'll do, so I'm going to do this um, this seam here, generally what you'll do is you'll apply the wash and you'll let capillary action spread it for you. So it's still, that's uh, too big. <clears throat> it's, um, it's still a little messy, but generally, can you see the way that I apply it there and it just flows along the seam so that's what you want with a pin wash. Um, other areas that you can use for a pin wash are bringing out details like these. So it's not splodging it all over the model, it's just applying it in you know, pinpoint areas, so to speak. Um, also good for little areas like that. Yeah, so again, you apply it, and that capillary action just takes it along those seams, and it really makes it stand out. So if you have a look at that area, let's get some focus, compared to say behind it up the back here, where we haven't applied any yet, you can really see the difference. So that's what a pin wash does. It takes a bit more of a steady hand, and beautiful for bringing out detail like that. So it's a great way to bring out detail on models. A bit of dry brushing over that once it's dry, and those details are just going to pop. So that's what a pin wash does. Here's just one more thing that I would do it on. The, um, the main thing to be careful with with this is that you don't want to leave tide marks. So I'm going to do something deliberately a bit ugly here. If you splush it on too much, this is going to dry around here. Ooh, let's get the camera the right way. This is going to dry around this and leave a big sort of tide mark. I mean, it looks dramatic if that's what you want, but um, yeah, it's not ideal. So yeah, that's pin washers. It's beautiful. I love pin washers.
So next we have a filter. So a filter is applied very much overall the surface that you're trying to work on and it's very good for blending colours together. So it blends camo together so it doesn't feel quite so harsh edged between the two colours of your camo. Uh, it generally tones down colours or changes the colour overall. So with this green that I'm working with, and look, please excuse the fact that this is a German tank painted in Russian green. It's purely just you know, for illustrative purposes. I would never have this as a finished model. <clears throat> but with our green, I'm going to try two washes. So I've got an oil colour which is ooh, yellowy sort of flesh colour and I've also got an ultramarine blue. Um, do a lot of my washes with oils just because I find them beautiful to work with. But yeah, what, uh, with filters and washes, slight difference in ratio. So for filters, you're looking at about a 1 to 20 ratio rather than a 1 to 10. So it's a bit thinner than your wash. So, there we go. Um, I should also stress, if you're using oil paints or enamels for your washes and for your filters, it's good to have a base, a base coat that's acrylic because if you're applying thinners over the top of an uh, enamel wash, uh, an enamel base coat, you're just going to strip it off down to bare plastic or to your primer. So yeah, f uh, oils or enamels over the top of an acrylic, you're good to go. Water-based acrylic is not going to come off with this thinner. So, here's a filter with the yellowy colour. We'll try it just here. Way too heavy-handed there. So I'm going to take a bit of that off. Way, way too heavy-handed. Needs to be much, much thinner than that, so bad call on my behalf. Yeah, you get a feel for what it looks like, and you can just sploosh it off. So we'll do that one there, and then I'll try it with my ultramarine, and we'll see. So the ultramarine will kind of cool down the green that we've got, that we're working with. Um, but again, I want to be really very, very thin with this, with this paint. So let's try the ultramarine here, say. So it takes a little getting used to, uh, and it also does tend to pool, so you can see where it's sort of pooling along the edge there. But I'll let those dry, come back a bit later, take some photos, and you'll see what the differences are. So hopefully you'll be able to see the difference between this panel, the unaffected green panel, and then the lightened panel. Yeah, like I said, good for colour modulation. Still a bit too much on this one. Great for colour modulation um, and overall effect. So, you know, you wouldn't just do a panel here and there. You know, typically, if I was doing this, I'd be doing it over the whole surface. Um, you really, you know, it, you don't want to see individual shades of the blue. You want it to affect the whole thing overall. So that would be a lot more what you'd be doing than just a single panel. So that is a filter. I don't use them much, but they're interesting. last technique I'm talking to you about today is dot filters. Dot filters, I love these, they're really cool. So again I have to stress, you need to, if you're using oil paints, you need to make sure you've got an acrylic undercoat, otherwise you're screwed. Um, so the way dot filters work is that you get a whole bunch of different colours of oil paints, lights, darks, whatever you want to use, and you splotch them on to a surface, and this is perfect for subtle colour variations. So it's great for dust effects, or faded paint, or rain streaks down the side of a turret. It's great for that sort of stuff. So I'm going to splodge some lightish colours on this side of the turret, and some darker and sort of more random colours on the other side, and we'll just see what effects we get. So here goes. So you can see on this side, we've got quite a random selection of colours. So we've got some sort of pinks, some reds, some blues, some greens. And on the other side, I've tried to restrict myself a little more to just lightish colours. So we've got some kind of whitey yellows, some pinks, and one or two little tiny reds. So let's see what effect we get from these two. So again using quite a wide brush for a dot filter and just dip it in some thinners then get most of the thinners off you want a nice soft brush and just very gently streak down the side so I'm hoping on this side that we're going to get kind of a streaky rainy light dusty effect down this side of the turret 
we'll see. So those pinks are really kicking in here. Yeah, at the moment it looks ridiculous and comical. Um, but the beautiful thing about this is that you just you know, keep going until you're happy with what you like. If you don't like what you've done, just get rid of it with thinners and move on. Thinners. And the trick is to have you know, most of the thinners washed off each time you get stuck in anyway. There we go. Alright, I'll move on to the Here other side. Partway, look, we are partway through the other side. So you can see those colours have all streaked down. Really interesting combination of colours there. Like I said, comical at the moment, but we'll keep going so you get some nice cools and darks. For some reason, this red paint is not coming off at all, so I'm actually having to scrape it away. So you can see there's still a dot of that red, 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 which is a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest. But um, I'll just scratch that bad boy off, and that'll be fine. So yeah, you can definitely see, let me just scratch those red bits off and then we'll talk. So yeah, you can see where the red bits were, I've scratched it off with a scalpel, it's left behind a bit, a bit of nastiness, but you know, you could weather that up with some mud or hang some crew packs over it or something like that if you needed to. But again, this is why you test it out on a test bed first. But yeah, you get a feel for the different turret styles, so this one, kind of slightly mouldier looking, it looks like it's been in the rain. This one here, <coughs> slightly dustier looking, looks like it's been out in the dust. Um, yeah, those are the four techniques. I hope this is helpful. There is another technique called a sludge wash where you just like gloop on a heap of dark brown oil paint and then wipe it off with a tissue and it stays in the recesses. <coughs> mm, yeah, I've seen it used successfully on planes, but for armour, it's not so great. I'm not a fan of that. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. I'll take a few photos once all this dries to show you the different areas. We can see the differences. And, um, yeah, I hope that dispels some of the confusion and some of the myths about filters and washers and pin washers. And if you have any questions, please feel free. Chime in down below in the comments or get in touch with me. And, um, yeah, chat to you next time. Pop by my blog. It's davesmodelworkshop.com. See you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.